back to my podcast. This is Anne P. of Fiber, Floss, and Fiction. Today is Thursday, June 11th, 2020. I hope everyone is well, uh, staying safe, uh, doing the best that you can do right now with the world in its crazy state of affairs. Um, lots of things going on in current and political events right now. And um, I know that's a source of stress for a lot of people, myself included. Um, so I hope that you're doing the best that you can do at this time, given all the crazy things that are going on. If you're a new viewer, uh, welcome. And I hope that you find a reason to hit the subscribe button and come back and visit again. If you're a brand new, or sorry, if you're a returning viewer, uh, thank you as always for choosing to spend some time with me. And today I'm going to talk about my normal stuff, knitting, books, and cross-stitch. So I'm going to jump right on in um, and let's talk about knitting. So I have been working on the 100-day project and mostly what I've been focusing on are either smaller projects and or things that are heavier weight DK or worsted type projects. Um, we are past the 50% mark. I think today is day 65, maybe 66-ish. Anyway, past the halfway mark. So I just wanted to give a quick update on what I've gotten accomplished in those first 60 odd days. Um, all of these are pieces that are being earmarked to head to a charity. Um, for inner city Baltimore uh, folks who are in shelters or um, homeless or in transition in some way. Uh, so I've got six hats, a pair of mittens, a scarf, two shawls done, and a third one that I am working on right now, which I'm going to show you here in a minute. This is the only project that I'm working on for fun right now. Um, I'm still, I'm so close, but not quite done. The final big sample, um, sample knit that I'm working on, that's for uh, a kit that will be out in the fall in collaboration with the Yarn Guys. So the project, project that I am working on right now for the 100 Day Project is the Breathe and Hope Shawl by Casa Pinka. The cover pattern. So this is a fingering weight shawl, two colors uh, of yarn, and it's a boomerang shaped shawl. I really wanted to knit this shawl for a number of reasons. I mean, I like the patterning. I thought it was a very interesting looking shawl. I'm not a huge fan of the boomerang shawls because I think the one end is like way too long and narrow, but I'm not reverse engineering any of the patterns really that I'm working on um, unless I was like running out of yarn or something which I'm not for this. Uh, let me talk to you quickly about the two yarns that I'm using uh, and show you their labels. The first one is Supernatural Yarns Mermaid Sock in the colorway Hogshead. Here's her card. Uh, this is a 100% merino two ply with 400 yards uh, to 100 grams. And the second one I'm using is Sincere Sheep's Eureka Fingering. So I know I've spoken about Brooke before. Um, all of her yarns are American source. This one happens to come from a Rambouillet flock in California, which is where she's based. And all of her yarns are plant dyed. So they're natural dyes that she uses. This is actually 500 yards to 100 grams, but the Rambouillet is so bouncy. The, the two yarns seem very, very similar in weight. So, um, oh, let me show you the two yarns. This is the Supernatural Yarns Sock Weight Yarn. And this is Brooks Telegraph. Avenue is the name of the colorway, which is a speckled dye. Kind of fun. So the pattern is divided up into sections, and each section has either kind of a horizontal effect to it or a vertical effect to it. So 
here is the horizontal type effect and the vertical type effect. The pattern does have you switch between uh, needle sizes to help keep your gauge a little more consistent, which is good because this is technically a slip, well, not technically, it is a slip stitch pattern. So it would have the likelihood of drawing in uh, more than this sort of garter stitch based piece. Now, in the interest of full disclosure, this section and this section are supposed to be the same uh, stitch. And it basically looks like garter stitch, even though it's not really. Uh, there are some other rows where the, you actually are doing um, stockinette or alternating with this garter ridge. However, when I work, was working on this and had cast it on last weekend, um, my husband and I had gone camping for a few days, which was lovely, and we were outdoors, um, and I may have had an extra glass of wine. And so when I got to this, the instruction to work most of the front row or right side row um, stripes, if you will, on this, the abbreviation is one which inside my head is not what the designer actually is using, if that makes sense. So her abbreviation is to actually, you're knitting into the row below, and so it makes this garter stitch portion slightly more stretchy this way. I did not do that. Do I think that there's a major enough difference to rip out this section and this section? No, I do not. So um, I just, made it match and when I get to the next time that I have this sort of gartery row stuff I made a note to myself to remember that her version of that abbreviation is not my version of that abbreviation. So here's where it is right now. I have two of the vertical sections done. This one here up at the very narrow part and this one down here at the wider part and I'm working on this other striped gartery stitch-ish section right now. And then that gets me through section six and there are 10 sections total. So I know I will have plenty of yarn. I'll probably actually have enough left of this to use for something else. Um, maybe not like a full pair of socks, but I'll, I'll probably have around 100 yards left of this one. Um, so I might use it in combination with another um, color similar to this. I think this one I'll be pretty close to using all of it. So a little past, it's the halfway mark of the pattern, but it's not proportionately the halfway mark because you start this project up here at the tiny tip and you're increasing as you go. So it's very long and narrow right now. So that is what I currently have on the needles um, and am working on for that particular project. Um, let's see, I wanted to talk to you briefly about the fact that if you're a knitter, I have been enjoying this 100 day project so much that I decided I would like to do another 100 day project to start when this one's finished, which will be uh, July 17th. So I'm going to be hosting a 100 Days of Socks uh, knit along. Uh, I will put the link down below to my Ravelry group where we have a thread started. You're welcome to join with any sock pattern, any sock yarn, whatever that might be for you, um, and come join us and knit socks for 100 days. It's kind of a great way to ease into the fall with some smaller projects that are great for summer. And then... You might even have a few pairs finished that you could put in a holiday gift box, or at least that's my theory. So um, come join us. I think it'll be a lot of fun. It's super casual. And like I said, there's, I, there's no restrictions on it other than it has to be socks of some kind. So um, I'm looking forward to that. And in uh, kind of getting ready for that, I started looking through some sock patterns, which is a dangerous slippery slope. Um, I think I have 97 now in my queue on Ravelry. Uh, but I ordered this book. Let me take the jacket cover off. 
Um, this is 52 Weeks of Socks. It is published by Lane. Um, they are a Scandinavian company. I love their aesthetic. Uh, I have several of their magazines when they were still producing those. Excuse me, it's allergy season here. <clears throat> they have some great basic wearable type garments in them. And this collection of socks kind of runs the gamut from fairly simple, there's like a plain vanilla sock pattern in here, to more complex ones. And I love the aesthetic of the book. It's just beautiful. Um, so there's 52 sock patterns in here. Here's one that is on my short list, Lati. I don't know if I'm saying that right. I think it's German. One of my German speaking friends who watches wants to correct my pronunciation, please do. Um, they're all different designers. So there's some designers that you probably haven't heard of. The designer of the sock, her name is Emily Joy uh, Rickard. I haven't run into her stuff before. Um, but there's Hohi Locatelli. Uh, there is, who's one of my other favorites in here? Um, Rachel Coopy. She's a British designer. And she contributed that pair of colorwork socks called Lempy. Um, there's a few others. Most of them are written for true fingering weight. Um, there's a couple of heavier weight ones. Let me get the name of this one. Oh, these are actually Isabel, Isabel Kramer's contribution uh, called Casual Lace and... The yarn is kind of more sport to light DK weight for these. So they're slightly heavier, but they're lace. Really pretty. So out of the 52 weeks, um, I don't know that I'll knit all of them, but there's probably a good half of them that I would knit at some point, maybe not in the 100 days of sock sal. Um, but uh, that book is now unfortunately out of print. Um, there are a few retailers who have it in Canada if you, uh, and they're not releasing the patterns, at least to my knowledge at this point, uh, at, like individual ones, you have to buy the whole book. But if you're interested, <coughs> excuse me, you can still find them, uh, copies, a few floating around in Canada. I think all the US retailers and UK re retailers that I looked at online had already sold their copies. But a good resource um, if you like socks, very fun. Um, okay, so that's going to do us for knitting and let's move on and talk about books. Um, I really just have one book to talk to you all about this time because I just started a very long book. It's almost 800 pages uh, called The Elven and I'm not quite even halfway through that one. So maybe we'll get it done by the next time I talk to you. Maybe not, but let's talk about what I have gotten read. This book is called The Play of Death. The author is Oliver Potich, Potich. Um, and it is a hangman's daughter tale. If you're not familiar with these, this is book four in his series. I've read book one, but not two or three. So these are kind of interesting historical mysteries. They are set, um, they are set in what is sort of Germany, Austria, um, medieval period and the local hangman who is kind of the main character in the original book he is kind of one of the village unclean um, because of his because of his job as the local executioner um, he's not looked on with any kind of love or favor in the by the people in this town as you might imagine because he kind of has a not so great job. Um, part of his job also is to, when somebody's been arrested, to torture them to get a confession out of. However, he is very smart and wise in the ways of the world. And so he actually uses his brain to try to figure out if there might be another culprit behind various and sundry crimes that have been committed. So in the first book, he solves a sort of unsolvable mystery with the help of, at his t at the time, his young young daughter, the eldest of his two daughters. And by the time we get to this book, um, 
Jakob is much older. He's 60. He's kind of become the town drunk. His daughter's now married to the local, they call him the bath keeper, but basically she and her husband treat minor illnesses. They're kind of not at the level of a doctor, a medicus, but they have herbal remedies and they set bones and they pull teeth and that kind of thing. And she delivers babies. So um, her husband is asked to, or her husband is taking their youngest son to a, a neighboring town to be tutored by the same school teacher who taught him. And while they're there, this horrible death occurs in the context of one of the um, plays that was put on for religious edification that shows the crucifixion of Christ and um, kind of the Last Supper, you know, it has the story of Judas involved in it. Um, there's a murder in this other town <clears throat> that involves the actors that are putting this play on. And so um, the hangman's daughter's husband and her son are in this town and he's kind of asked by the school teacher who is trying to write the script for this play uh, to stay and try to help them figure out what happened. So that launches this whole story and also involves the hangman's daughter, Magdalena, back in their town, her younger sister, who's a bit of a hellion, um, and then Jakob, the hangman, gets pulled into um, basically act as the torturer to talk to the suspects in the town where his son-in-law and grandson are now staying. So it involves all of them. It pulls in some really interesting historical facts about the time, about the area. Um, it talks a little bit about um, kind of the movement away from believing in things like ghosts to a quote more scientific era. Um, there's all these things that happen that the townspeople are saying is the result of this bad luck, this ghost, these creatures that live in the mountains, and all of this other stuff. And the hangman, Jakob, winds up finding um, real causations behind each of these events. So it's very well written. The author uh, himself actually comes his family comes from this area that he's writing about and he is descended from one of the local hangmen slash torturers who lived in this time. So a very good read. I would suggest reading the first book before you tackle this one. Like I said, this is the fourth in the series. Um, I think this can then be read out of line with the other two, but having the setting created for you and understanding who these characters are and the society that they live in before you would jump into this one would be very helpful. Um, it is translated so there's a few odd parts or just words that were I think translated a little oddly like instead of using the word, word child in some places um, like what's that child gotten up to they've actually translated it as what's that kid gotten up to and it's a little bit too contemporary for the rest of the language of the book, but that's a very minor complaint and otherwise a very enjoyable, good read. So I'm recommending that for your reading pleasure. Okay, let's move on and we're gonna talk cross stitch. Okie doke. Um, let's see. I have a bunch of things to share with you guys. Let's start with the first thing that I worked on since I've last seen you. Um, this is Dimensions Gold Collection Petites Christmas Morning Pets. I took this with us on our camping trip because it's small. It's a kit, right? And it all fits in my cute little so much to love bag with the hedgehogs on it because hedgehogs. Um, and I got it out our kind of first night when we were in camp and we were sitting there enjoying the beautiful evening under the cottonwood trees and I took two stitches and the head of the needle broke off. 
and I did not have any spares with me, nor did I have an extra project. So this got put on hold for three days until we got home and then I pulled it back out again. So here's where this little guy is currently. I came down here and I worked on the puppy jowls and this is his other paw. I brought a bunch of the neutral colors in on the weight of the hat. Um, I finished up the holly branch back stitching. So just in general, um, I'm trying to fill in like these last little areas here. This is mostly done. There's a little bit left right there to complete. Uh, and also here in the pom-pom. And then it's sort of done to there other than some back stitching. And I am trying to do that as I go. Um, there's a lot of back stitching in this. I think it's super cute. I love how it looks. It's just taking me forever to get through. Again, I mentioned this in my last video. I feel like here, I worked on this for X number of days and it should be so close to being done and it's still not. I have a ton of stitching left to do, right? I have all of the dog face, I have to fill in his ear, plus all of this of the puffy part of the hat, the fur trim that comes around there. So I do have quite a bit left to do and his little puppy elbow is kind of right there. I'm trying to get this out and you know do a few hundred stitches in it minimum every month. Um, so I did get some stitches put into it this month, which is great, but not as much as I would have liked to, but so it goes. Um, it may be out again this month. Uh, let's see. I'm going to pause you guys for a second because I need to go grab, um, my, um, finished objects that I got done this week. So hang on one second. I'll be right back. Sorry about that. Um, I just wanted to make sure that I showed you guys these. Um, this is the other piece that I worked on like the first day or so. Is that right? No, I actually finished this like the last day of May. I think that's right. Anyway, it is November Word Play. This is on a 32 count natural linen using mostly color and cotton hand dyed floss. Love how this one came out. It's like neutral, but not. This is a great uh, orange from Angela. I used it in many of the pumpkins, plus this other orange and in the turkey. And I backed this with just a very simple kind of primitive, it's actually a Blackbird Designs quilting fabric, which I think goes kind of nicely. It's got the sort of leafy motifs in this, the round that kind of mimics the pumpkins. So this one is done and ready to be up on the shelf for Thanksgiving in November when that comes. And since I was finishing things, I also finished my June word play into an FFO and backed that with the kind of bright red patriotic star flag day themed uh, quilting cotton. This is on a 28 count. So just for those of you of interest, here is the difference in sizes. It doesn't affect the length too much, but you can see that the width is different or height height of it is different um this was a jodry fabrics 28 count Brittany fabric and again most of the uh, floss is a hand dyed cotton from color and cotton love that cute dog right there so this is actually out and i'm enjoying it being displayed for right now okay that covers those Next, I worked on Winter Fairy, which is a Joan Elliott design. Um, let's see here. Let me find the cover photo to share with you guys. Maybe kind of, sort of. Here she is. This one is a uh, finish goal for this year, so I am trying to keep it as a focus when I can. Um, I'm doing a very casual um, Joan Elliott along with uh, Aviatrix Stitcher. Hi, Leah. Um, and so here's where she is so far this month. 
The fabric is a Color and Cotton Even Weave, 28 count, and it was a colorway, I don't know the name for it, it was her July like 2017 Fabric of the Month. And so I'm stitching this with the called for DMC and Krynik threads. I have not started the beading yet, although I have started the Krynik. I've done the back stitching here in her wings and the embossed type stars that are there on the purple. So I worked on uh, basically there over this section is mostly all new for a thousand stitches that I put into it. Uh, the white and off-white and mostly white. So she has this big kind of drape, over drape that comes across there and that's what I'm working on right now. Um, I'm hoping, even though I have quite a few challenge uh, prompts that I'm doing this month, I'm hoping that I will be able to have her come out for another at least couple of days, um, maybe at the end of the month or closer to the end of the month because I would like to get some more progress in on her. I feel like if I can have the cross stitching completely done by like November, late November, and I can have the end of November into December to do all the beading because there's a fair amount of beading. Okay, there is that. And let's see. Oh, how can I forget the big one? I've also been working on fairy tales and just finished up a challenge prompt as well as a thousand stitches on it. Here's where it is right now. Um, this section right here is basically what I worked on. That is the dark blue dress of the queen that's down in this motif. There's a white horse somewhere behind her, but he hasn't really started coming out yet. Um, I think that's it for this one this month, um, but it will be out again in July for several different prompts, which I will talk about in a minute. Next, I am working on currently Huckleberry Farm from the Blue Flower. I started this last month. Here's what it will look like when it's done. I have converted all of the floss to mostly color and cotton. I just have a big stash of Angela's floss, so I like to use it when I can. This is on a 35 count um, coffee dyed linen from the Primitive Hair. And I have not done much since the last time you saw it. I've just started on the secondary roof there. So that's going to be my project for the next several days until I get a thousand stitches put into this one as well. Loved working on it. I'm, I'm kind of torn. I, so I'm getting ready to start this section of the house and I'll probably, if I stick to it and just work on that, be fairly close to the thousand stitch mark just by getting that accomplished. Um, I should say I'm stitching this one thread over two strands of linen, um, which is what the pattern calls for. However, I would really like to see if I could maybe start the mountain and possibly one of the um, huckleberry bush fronds, strands, whatever there, just to see how the purples are gonna look. So I may try to count over and hop up and do that. Um, we'll see. We'll see where I, where I get to and what I have interest in, in focusing on. Uh, okay, so that is what I have worked on in cross stitch since the last time I talked to you guys. Um, I did have 300 stitches that I put into which way. If you follow me on Instagram, you'll have seen that, but it doesn't really look like much. It's, it was only two colors. Uh, to get those 300 stitches. So I will show that to you again next time it comes out. Um, it's pretty pretty boring. It's just the edge of the moon right now. Okay, so let's talk about plans going forward. Um, the Full Coverage Fanatics group is going to be having a weekend challenge focus, the weekend of the solstice, which is like the 19th, 20th, 21st. 
and the theme is based on Shakespeare. So it is a Midsummer Night stitch and the challenge is focused on anything that you can relate back to Shakespeare, uh, the person or Shakespearean works. So um, for instance, if you have something with um, one of the historical figures from his history plays, that would be great. Uh, you could focus on something that has a king or a crown in it also for one of the history plays. Um, there are references to Romeo and Juliet where you could use an Italian town or you could use something with lovers or since they're star-crossed, you could use something with stars in it. I'm going to be using uh, a stitching shelf for a rose by any other name would smell as sweet from that, that quote from, from Shakespeare. Uh, because it has all of the climbing roses across the top in the first set of bookshelf uh, vignettes. So that one will be out um, for some love later later in the month. And uh, coming up, we've just released a new challenge. Uh, that's going to kick off the 1st of July and run the entire month of July if you are intrigued by full coverage now might be a great time to try some stuff out we originally were planning on doing an olympic themed uh, challenge for the olympics which are were mostly in july but since those were canceled because of various pandemic type things and travel issues uh, we opted to do something different and we're going to be doing a month-long bingo sal there's all the information in the group which i will link to below as well as these the two events that I'm talking about. Um, for this, each spot on the bingo board, other than the center stitcher's choice sort of freebie, is related to a specific item that would be found within your design. So for instance, there's dragons, there's birds, um, there's things like designs that have more than 80 colors, designs that have less than 80 colors, um, things that have to do with either the either the designer name or the design name, starting with a specific vowel um, or consonant, a letter. Uh, so you can choose to get five across um, horizontally, five across vertically, or five down vertically, uh, a diagonal of five, or you can go for bingo blackout, which is every one of the 25 squares. Uh, we have two options. One is counting, one is non-counting. If you're doing the non-counting, you have to do a project that relates to the prompt. Um, and we're being pretty specific with this. So if you are doing something, um, let's say that lives in the sea and you, you have a design that just shows the ocean, doesn't show any fish, um, shells where there'd be oysters or something else, crabs living in them, um, or seahorses or mermaids, that doesn't count. We need to see the actual thing that the prompt is related to in your design. Um, for the counting, you can either choose to do a thousand stitches if you have something that matches the prompt, or you can opt if you are somebody who just maybe works on one project or don't have something that fits a prompt, you can opt to do um, penalty stitches and do 2,000 stitches for that particular block in order to get your bingo. So loads of information in there. I have a bingo card that's a visual reference so you can see what your options are and maybe give you an excuse to work on some projects that you haven't tackled yet this year if you're a multiple project person. Um, I think it's going to be a lot of fun. So if you are at all interested in full coverage, um, consider joining us. Even if you don't want to participate, it's really fun to see all the different projects that people are working on or plan to work on. Um, and there is a thread for the event already open, so you can pop in there and indicate what of the options you plan to do for yours. Um, the other thing that I wanted to mention is that I am going to be doing a new start on the 15th to do a stitch along with Dina of um, Half Stitch Cross Stitch. Hi Dina. And I believe Sarah at Stitch and Mommy and Becca. Although Becca, I don't know your floss tube channel name if indeed you have one. Um, if you do, leave me a comment below and I'll add it to the um, show note links. 
Uh, we're going to be starting a Teresa Wensler pattern for uh, June 15th, and we'd love to have you join us. Um, it's, again, a very casual style, so you can pick any design that you might like um, to get started with. And I, I have a couple of Teresa Wenslers in my stash, but I decided to go in kind of a different way because I'm just trying to keep the massive BAPS number to a dull roar. I, I have so many big projects. Um, I think 2021 is going to be a focus on getting big things finished. Uh, so this is a smaller one, although not super, super small, and one that I hadn't seen very much uh, out and about. It's uh, her Harvest Sampler. So I got intrigued by this one because I had Googled Teresa Wensler cross stitch, as one does, and the Harvest Sampler popped up. There are two uh, Russian stitchers who have stitched it. So I, I went and visited their blogs even though I you know, knew I couldn't read the text with them. Um, but the photos on their blogs were amazing. This this mock-up does not do this this pattern justice at all. Um, it does have some blends as, well, it's not a Teresa or one slur if it doesn't, right? Um, there's some specialty stitches, particularly in the border. Um, it has some Krynik, which I substituted um, Petite Treasure Braid for, and some beads. It's sort of neutral in a way, um, but the greens um, shown here on this version of it really don't pop the way that they did on the samples that I saw. So, um, yeah, that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna give it a go. And let me show you what I've chosen. So all of the Krynik and beads are in uh, kind of a gold bronze, color palettes. Sorry, lots of rustling. Um, there is also pearl cotton in this creamy neutral. Um, and since I was converting over to the PTB, this is what I opted for. It is PB50. And it's a gold, but it's kind of a bronzy gold. And it goes with these two bead colors. And I kind of went a different way with my fabric. Um, I opted to go with a Color and Cotton Jobelin, a 28 count that I had in my stash called Barnwood. And it's kind of a purpley gray. Um, it's really not it's really not showing up very well on camera, but I did I did do a floss toss on it, and what I found was that all of these golds and purples and then the pearl cotton, which are down in the border, really, really stood out against it, as did the greens. I was a little bit surprised by that. This is actually purple and then kind of this bronzy tan gold color. Uh, that I, I worried about, but there's enough red in this purple India, the DMC that's called for, that it looked fine on, on this fabric. So, I don't know if I can hold all of these up. Let's pretend. So I think it will be subtle, but I think that there's enough lightness and brightness in other things that it, it will show up just fine. Um, and I really liked, I really liked this fabric and wanted to use it for something. Uh, so that's what I've got on tap the 15th. Like I said, we'd love to have you join us if there's a Teresa Wensler you've been thinking about starting and have not yet, but would like to have a nudge to do. Um, very casual and we're really just all getting started on it. I'm going to plan on working on mine to put that magic thousand stitches into it because I have it for some some challenge prompts. Uh, but otherwise, you may choose to do however much or however little you would like on yours. And um, just, you know, have the enjoyment of kind of pulling the project out whenever you want along with, with us as we work our way through the patterns. 
Okay, I think that's it. Um, not too, too long, hopefully. Mm, Long-ish. I have been trying to film this whole week and it has been so crazy busy here that every day that I've thought about it, it's like been dinner time by the time I could get it together and I was not able to get it together after dinner. So it is Thursday and I was planning to like film this on Sunday, but whatever, I'm here now. We all have to kind of just hang tight and do the best we can with the crazy going on. So. Until I see you next time, and I'm not going to promise anything about when I'll be back, but I would like to try to have this be in another week or so and not two weeks. Uh, until then, I hope that you all stay safe, stay well, um, do what you need to do to take care of yourself, and anything you can do to try to make our world a little bit better place, whatever your contribution to that is, um, I hope you'll consider spending some time doing that and... If nothing else, just be kind to everyone. I will talk to you guys later. Have a good weekend.